This is Twit. When we talk about when we talk about the discussion of uh, engineers and software developers, the concept of ethical computing, we uh, we naturally go to oh well should we, should we or should we not build robots that kill humans you know the the, 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 like the low hanging fruit the things that are kind of obvious but in the last uh, five or ten years what well, we've come to appreciate that ethical computing uh, also. Uh, comes down to what biases are we programming into these tools that uh, mostly white dudes in San Francisco, San Francisco Bay Area, uh, <laughs> what 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 prejudices are they putting into their tools? And the sexism of a voice assistant being, of course, it's a woman because you're gonna you're, you're gonna here's a here's a a, a piece of software that's going to do whatever you want it to do and is right there at your beck and call. Uh, it's it's really a, a Mad Men sort of sort of sort of paradigm. Uh, I mean uh, even. Microsoft going to, uh, I think we can safely say Cortana because that was never yeah. really a thing as much as Microsoft <laughs> wanted to be a thing. I mean, I, I realized that the character came from uh, the Halo game, but even there it's like, okay, so you have this sort of sexy AI robot and now, hey, now you can own a, you can have a sexy AI robot inside your own computer. How about that, fellas? Uh, so mm -hmm. that's why I, I'm, I'm, I was kind of surprised that that's not something that Apple would have addressed almost early on. They, of course, they bought, uh, they, they bought Shlomo as we as we call it to avoid triggering uh, uh, devices. They bought they bought Shlomo as a, as an iPhone app, uh, and I guess the name just sort of stuck. Plus the trademark clearances. But one of the things that wasn't uh, wasn't obvious to me immediately when the Google Assistant uh, came aboard is that, no, there was never a name for the Google Assistant. It was always Google Assistant. I think almost from the get-go, there were male and female voices. And when they broadened that uh, that palette, they decided to say, well, we're not going to give these, uh, these uh, voices names. We're just going to simply give them colors because we don't want to impose uh, uh, a... We don't want to, we don't want to impose a mindset that might have applications to like whatever uh, whatever that name and that culture means um but i uh, so I, that that's that that was all my part of saying lisa lisa just absolutely got that was the number one thing that i thought and i think it's the most important thing about this change i will say though that one of the things that's kind of that's kind of missing from the whole voice assistant is the knowledge that it is uh, I, I think that uh, voice assistants are more exciting, more important than augmented reality or virtual reality, because this is kind of the ideal that we're kind of moving forward to. That here's a device that we're talking, we've, we've gone from a computer that we can carry around in our pockets to a computer that we can have on our wrists, and now a computer that we don't actually need to look at or touch or interact with whatsoever. We can just simply ask it to do something, and it will do that for us. We're one step away from these assistants doing things proactively for us and telling us that, oh, by the way, uh, uh, you asked me a week ago to try to make a COVID vaccine appointment for you. I found one for you uh, this morning. You have it at 1040 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, at, the, at, uh, at, the, at the football stadium. And so as these things become more knowledgeable about what we do and as we rely upon them more, I think it's going to be more and more important for us to choose what kind of voice we're interacting with so that this is our Google Assistant, our Shlomo, as opposed to the generic voice that uh, if you if if you hear it uh, in, in your if you hear it in your house, you know that it's talking to you and not to somebody else. And the next step after that, this is something that uh, I only started thinking about uh, about a month or two ago, is that it, we are now at the uh, a friend of mine uh, lost his voice uh, bec because of uh, of cancer surgery, and fortunately he was uh, he was a broadcaster, so there was hundreds and hundreds an hour of hours. Of, uh, of audio of him speaking. And so a uh, company, I think, in Scotland was able to build a, a voice model based on all those recordings so that mm -hmm. when he gave public speeches, he was using his uh, his uh, his MacBook to speak for him, but it could speak in his voice. Imagine what it comes to, but it, now that now that stuff can really be synthesized almost from whole cloth. So imagine what can happen when you get to sort of choose what kind of a voice is tailored to you. Like if it listens to if it listens to me speak uh, long enough, not that I would want to hear myself speaking back to me through a speaker, but I could see. Well, here is a here is the, the family voice of Andy Anatko. So th that reflects the region that he l grew up in and the people he was surrounded with. We can build a voice that is perfectly new, but based on the voice mannerisms of someone who grew up in New England, or even. I will wind this up. I'm sorry, but this is this is a topic that kind of got me uh, excited. Mm -hmm. uh, even 
what if, and this is going to be really, really creepy, but this is, if technology is usually the intersection between really cool and really creepy, um, <laughs> what, if, what if, as what if like you, you lost your brother, you lost your father, you lost your mother uh, suddenly, would you be okay with the idea of in, during the year while you're still in the mourning process, if it built a voice model so that maybe it wasn't exactly like your mother's voice, but it sounded like your mother's voice. Or if you are uh, if you have a voice assistant that your kids are using, your little kids are using, what if it could be sort of modeled on a member of the family? All these sort of things are interesting. And these are questions that we don't uh, really have to get into when it comes, in, comes to something like augmented reality or virtual reality, because... It's just a, it's it's a it's a they're they're really really incredibly cool gadgets, but they don't really work on our minds in such an on such an emotional level as something that we speak to and the voice speaks back to us in response. 